Two explosions struck security compounds in Aleppo, Syria today, killing 28 people. This is according to state media reports. This is the first significant violence in a major city that has largely, largely stood by Syrian President Bashar al-Assad in the 11-month-old uprising against his rule. With more on this, we are joined by Faisal al-Azam with the Syrian Canadian Council. So tell us, reports uh, suggesting the, that the Syrian opposition may have been responsible for the latest violence, uh, the two bombs in Aleppo. What can you tell us? Well, this is what the Syrian TV is saying. What's important to note specifically about the city of Aleppo is that for the past few weeks, it's been having very important uh, protests. And it is not a coincidence that uh, these so-called explosions occurred in, in Aleppo, specifically a Friday, which is known to be the protest day in uh, all of Syria. Similar events happened in Damascus, specifically in uh, the neighborhoods of uh, Al Midan and Kafr Suse, where huge protests occurred there. And of course, no coincidence with this regime, one week after these important protests, an explosion occurred there. We know that for a long time, the violence, the uprising has been outside of Damascus and Aleppo, and now it's going towards those two cities, uh, the suburbs, the neighboring areas. What is that a sign of to you? It's a sign that the people cannot take it uh, anymore. I mean, we are watching in Syria and uh, all of us outside of Syria in live stream the city of Hamas being bombarded with tank shells, with rockets. The human conscience cannot stay uh, calm with all these massacres occurring. So there is a very strong solidarity movement even in these uh, business cities or these hubs that are known to be lo loyalists to the regime. The only thing that is keeping the regime on its feet is the only play that they have in their notebook. It's uh, spreading fear, and uh, it's their 17 intelligence bodies, their military, their armed forces, and their security apparatuses. This is the only thing keeping them on their feet. If there was no tanks, there was no rockets, there was no militia thugs in Syrian streets, you would see all of Syria uh, trying to, to bring down uh, this tyranny and this dictator. Faisal, you mentioned Homs. We've heard a lot of the protests that are going on, the violence that's going on there. But uh, Aleppo, we haven't heard so much about. Has, have they already experienced protests and violence in the past, or is this new? Well, as I, as I mentioned, Aleppo is a, it's a, it's the business hub of Syria. For sure, when the protests started, it started in, in the suburbs, as you mentioned, and in, uh, in all cities, actually, in Syria that have not gained the privileges of, of Damascus and Aleppo. But in the past uh, weeks, we've been getting a lot of reports of important protests that are occurring in Aleppo. And uh, the regime, as I said, using its, uh, its favorite uh, play in its notebook, trying to spread fear one more time. And here they are, in an, actually in, a, in an area known to have important protests in Aleppo, uh, doing what they like to do best, explosions and, uh, and spreading fear and, uh, and chaos. Faisal, earlier this afternoon we were talking to somebody on the ground in Homs who, who was giving us a play-by-play -play of what he was seeing uh, going on in that city right now. The Syrian Canadian Council is asking for Ottawa to do a whole lot more on this issue. What do you think Canada should be doing about this? Of course. Now, something very important is that the people and the international community need to know that Syrians right now are living by two dictatorships, the dictatorship of Bashar al-Assad and the dictatorship of the United Nations Security Council, more specifically the veto of Russia and China, which has been a license to kill. Imagine that since Saturday, since uh, the veto of Russia and China, we are averaging 100 people almost in Homs. We are watching live in our homes here and live stream rockets and missiles bombarding Hamas. The situation is, is disastrous. We need a very fast intervention from the international community. So here's what we can do. We can bypass the United Nations Security Council and its dictatorship and go to the UN General Assembly or start a coalition of friends of Syria that was proposed by, uh, by President Sarkozy and other world leaders. And what we can do, and specifically in Canada, first of all, to isolate completely the regime and not and eliminate any existence of the Assad regime on Canadian soil. This means we need to close this embassy in Ottawa. We need to recall our ambassador. Any diplomats or any uh, honorary status of diplomats in Canada, specifically in Vancouver, Toronto, and Montreal, you have consuls there, strip them of their diplomatic status. 
Another thing extremely important on the political front, to recognize the legitimacy of the opposition and the Syrian National Council, and to tell the Assad regime, someone who kills, we do not recognize him anymore. We have a new representation for the Syrian people, and those are going to be our point of liaison to transit Syria into democracy. Another point extremely important is humanitarian and medical aid. Refugees are suffering in Syria. And as you can see in Hamas, the city is under siege. There is no medical equipment. The city is completely closed. To work as well on creating humanitarian corridors inside Syria and Faisal, protected Faisal, areas. Uh, we're almost out of time, but I want to yes. ask you really quick. When you see our prime minister in China uh, talking about new economic ties with this country, a country that vetoed the UN resolution against Syria, what goes through your mind? Of extreme disappointment because while Russia and China are playing Cold War games and while we are making condemnation speeches on the ground, almost 100 people are getting killed. We are at 7,000 right now, almost dead civilians, and almost 60,000 detainees. Only in Turkey we have 10,000 refugees. So while we are making business deals, Russia and China are, are playing their Cold War games and the Syrian population is getting slaughtered. So this is my request, the request of the Syrian Canadian Council and the entire human conscience. Stand by the Syrian people. We need your solidarity. Syria is getting slaughtered and we are watching. Faisal al-Azem is joining us from Montreal. He is with the Syrian Canadian Council. Thank you for your time today. Thank you for having me.